Welcome back to CurtainDeities.org. Today, we're going to be looking at the story of the gossip columnist that saved philosophy. Also known as Who Was Diogenes Laertius? The Great Ignoramus, the worst poet ever published, and the gossip columnist that saved philosophy. Now, Diogenes Laertius has been called many things. Nietzsche called him dim-witted, Jaeger called him the Great Ignoramus, and anthologists have claimed that his poetry was possibly the worst ever written. His work is often contradictory and confusing, and he's not always good at representing the positions of other philosophers, and yet he's one of my favorite figures in the history of philosophy. Little is known about Diogenes' life, beyond that he lived after Sextus Empiricus and before the rise of Neoplatonism, probably around the 3rd century, because we see him quote Empiricus, but he doesn't talk much about Neoplatonism, despite addressing his works to a Platonist. Diogenes was a doxographer, someone that compiled the work and of other philosophers into secondary and tertiary sources. His work, lives, teachings, and sayings of famous philosophers cites hundreds of sources, though to the frustration of many historians, Diogenes is often much more concerned with the gossip and personal details of the lives of philosophers than their actual teachings, and frequently misinterprets or misrepresents their work in his analysis. He also includes his own poetry, which has been universally panned as miserable and wretched by top encyclopedias of philosophy. Why then is Diogenes particularly interesting? Despite bad analysis, he does accurately quote when he actually uses quotations many sources. And this is important because of arguably the greatest single loss of knowledge in human history, the burning of the library at Alexandria. Diogenes was not particularly gifted in philosophy, but he quoted from hundreds of secondary and primary sources which are now lost, leaving this great ignoramus as the sole link between the modern age and many of the teachings of Greek philosophy. In fact, because of his blind quoting of passages and use of basically cutting and pasting the works of other philosophers, were not as concerned about his accounts as someone that might have been providing a philosophical interpretation of someone else's account instead of just stating it as it was written somewhere else. Without him, we would have no access to these ideas or philosophical thoughts. Despite mediocre analysis, his quotes are generally reliable or at least as reliable as whatever secondary sources he's quoting from. Sometimes Diogenes does use primary sources, sometimes he's using secondary sources. Most of both of those are lost to us now, but we can interpret from Diogenes just how reliable, and the primary sources we have access to, just how reliable some of those intermediate secondary sources are. Without Diogenes' work, we would have access to so much less of this information and the philosophers that existed in this time. There's a debate as to whether Diogenes himself was an Epicurean or a Peronian. His treatment of Epicurus is particularly sympathetic, and he's the sole reason that we have some of Epicurus's original letters, which shed important light on his philosophy. Check out my video on Epicurus for some of those excerpts from those letters that we really only have because of Diogenes that really kind of reframe his philosophy from being kind of this complete, unabashed, hedonistic idea around just pursuing pleasure to framing it around a freedom from pain, which is amazingly important, as well as Diogenes' work on the lives of philosophers being important to contextualizing some of their philosophy. He does, though, also refer to some Peronian sources as if he were of that school, saying, our book this or our this, leading others to claim that he was a Peronian skeptic, following the tradition of Sextus Empiricus. I like the story of Diogenes because much of philosophy is focused on someone with a great idea, but frequently we ignore those that make that idea popular and accessible to everyone. Without Diogenes, the described great ignoramus, we would have so much less information on many of the ancient Greek philosophers, and so many traditions of philosophy would be lost.
Philosophers like Voltaire did more to advance the cause of philosophy by popularizing it than actively contribute to it. Even Bertrand Russell, a great philosopher in his own right, also did a great deal to make philosophy accessible. Philosophers truly have two purposes, coming up with the ideas, but also connecting them to reality and the lives of ordinary people in such a way that those ideas will be carried forward. Diogenes utterly failed at the first task of coming up with innovative or new ideas or constructing interesting or rigorous analysis, but he succeeded in a monumental way at the second. He kept alive many traditions and ideas of philosophy despite his focus on the gossip about the lives of the philosophers, or things that many philosophers are frustrated with his obsession with these superficial details, and his almost keeping as a side note the actual positions in philosophy. But without authors like Diogenes, it wouldn't matter how great an idea someone has, because no one would know about it. You don't need to be a great philosopher to have an impact on the world of philosophy. Diogenes certainly was not, but he saved a huge amount of ancient philosophy that would otherwise have been lost. And that's why Diogenes is the great ignoramus, the worst poet ever published, and the gossip, gossip columnist that saved philosophy. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.